Now I was at the Goodwood Festival of Speed recently. The stand when I walked by to see this car was the loneliest place I've ever seen in such a context. No viewers looking at the car, nobody stopping and looking at the car from afar. It was on its own. It was the most lonely sight that I've ever seen. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to be reviewing the BMW 2 Series. This one's a little bit difficult for me to review because I have emotional attachments to BMW. It's in my past. My mother drove a 2002. I was a designer for the BMW Group for just over 11 years. Up until I arrived at BMW in 91, they had a very specific design language, I guess you could say, that was very BMW-ish for many years, many generations. And then we had the Bengal era, which brought in a bit of a revolutionary change to BMW's design language, and we went through what was called then flame surfacing. That design language matured to a slightly different look nowadays, which reached a catastrophic apex with the design of the new 4 Series. The universal critical reaction to the design of the BMW 4 Series has raised so many questions. So let's see if this new 2 Series design brings BMW lovers those answers that they've so desperately been seeking. My first impressions. I'm looking at it from a front three quarter. As I say, that's probably the best view to look at a car for the first time. And oh my gosh, they've fixed the front grille. Perhaps they are listening. It's a lot smaller than what we've seen in the 4 Series. Yeah, that front end, definitely it's been cleaned up. I'm looking at it in the sense that if it wasn't for the BMW grill, I, I wouldn't say it's a BMW. The headlights are quite strange. So the front end, as I study it, is slowly starting to disintegrate in my eyes. And I'm looking at a headlight that is totally different in language to the lower vent underneath it as well as to the grill as well as to the lower grill as well as to the bonnet the grill is attached in the middle with a very unresolved piece hard to say what it is it looks like a piece that has been added on in the last minute i know it's small but it's all these details that make up a car and make you feel it's been resolved and been designed to the nth, to the last little detail. Why are there so many angles and surfaces that have zero function to them? The, the angles around the inner part of the headlight where it comes towards the grill, they don't relate to anything on the front end. They're there for just design purpose. And they don't really go anywhere. They sort of tend to start to go and stop. It's circles and squares and triangles. They just don't speak to each other. I'm trying to see a face in the front of the car and I'm just not getting a face. I don't even want to try to fix this front end because you can't fix something like this. I think you would have to basically start from scratch again. What we're looking at here and even wider throughout the BMW range is a face that basically lacks any type any kind of intention. Now the most beautiful thing here is I would say the greenhouse. That is a BMW. So let's call it the head. I mean it's the part above the waistline or above the belt line as we call it and you can see the nice rake on the windscreen for a coupe. You can see the nice top line of the greenhouse coming through and doing what we call the Hofmeister knick. And by the way if you want to know something really uh, interesting. It really isn't a Hofmeister kink or kink. It is a Giugiaro kink because the first guy to actually do that on the BMW was Giorgetto Giugiaro. So check out a little bit of the history of BMW and you'll see that that was actually something coming from the pen of the master himself, the most iconic designer of the 20th century for sure, Giorgetto Giugiaro. Moving down 
as you look at the car from a perfect side view, there's something gone wrong. The problem here is that I expect this car to probably have either a V12 or a V16 in the front because I swear a bonnet that long is a little bit cartoonish on this vehicle here. I know it's a four wheel drive system, so they're needing perhaps a bit more space, but I think the proportions of this car are definitely off in the sense that this front wheel needs to come back. As we go back, we've got a funny zigzag on the one of the cores of the fender as it comes into the door, zigzags down diagonally, straightens out kind of like a Z or a Z and goes back down just behind the rear door. Well, that's a lot of zigzag and that is perhaps too much in that area. The car would do well to, to calm down a little bit, to relax in that area. There's just too many different radiuses, different sharpnesses to the lines. And then you get down to the sill panel, the rocker panel, and there's more going on. I mean, this, this car is, I wish I could understand that. I don't speak this language, so I can't understand why the car is designed this way. BMWs are pure, lightweight, clean design. And this is adding a lot of verbs, a lot of nouns. The whole point of a sentence is to communicate something. And if you're just throwing in adjectives and nouns and verbs with nothing actually meaning anything, just thrown in there, then you're not really communicating something. And I think that's the problem, the message I'm getting from this car is that there is no structure to the sentence or to the language that it's communicating. It's just surface noise and not any comprehensible sticking design that can last. Now let's move to the rear and see if it's the saving grace of this car. No, it's not the saving grace because again, this is not good. Strong elements like headlights that give you the character of the front end should at least be similar in character to the rear. It's another tail lamp design completely different from what we were looking at at the front. The shapes have no similarity. Would you say this car was designed in the dark? These lines are very confusing to understand which line I should be looking at. Too many divergent lines, too many different angles, too many different shapes happening within a very short amount of space, surface, and there's no calmness in this design. Look at it from the rear three quarter. How many different angles and different lines and different heights? You want a new look. We always try to improve our last designs. We always try to look to shift something a little bit into the future because we don't want to be seen standing still as designers. Honestly, don't know too many people who are in favor of this new design direction. And I'm not criticizing BMW for being wrong for trying new things or pushing a new direction. That's fine, that's what designers are paid to do. Perhaps if we wanna grab the diffuser, look at the diffuser where it separates from body color to black. The lines on there, the additional amount of surfaces, the way they don't really blend with each other or work with each other, Maybe if it was a different car company, I'd be a bit more relaxed, a bit more uh, accepting of this design language because you know every company has to have a unique look. And this definitely, in this area, is not looking like any other car I've seen before. Now the designer of this car is actually a super talented designer. Believe me, he is extremely talented. Jose Alberto Casas Peña, si se dice, no? He is responsible for a lot of concept cars from BMW. He's done the iNext prototype. He's done the Vision M Next concept. Look those cars up. Now, when you look at these renderings, they are as good as it gets. I mean, designing cars and getting to the level of Jose Alberto, when you see his drawings, his renderings of this car, I would say build it. I would stand in front of those renderings and say, Let's give it a shot, Jose. Let's see what this thing looks like in 3D. Again, I cannot overstate the beauty of Jose's, Jose Alberto's renderings. They are amazing and they are the car, but it doesn't always translate when you go to 3D. Now I was at the Goodwood Festival of Speed recently and what I saw there on the BMW stand 
where the 2 Series was made me extremely sad as a BMW lover. The stand when I walked by to see this car was the loneliest place I've ever seen in such a context. Nobody there to represent the car, nobody on the stand, no viewers looking at the car, nobody stopping and looking at the car from afar. And that, my friends, for somebody with an affinity for BMW, for a huge love for BMW, hurt me, actually made me very sad to see. So, in conclusion, something that shows that the design of the vehicle in 2D, what Jose Alberto did, was amazingly well done, but something was lost in the translation between that 2D and the 3D model. There was a break in the middle of the two and it just hasn't reconnected. And what you're seeing in 2D, as amazing as it is, has not kept the things that were right in the renderings and translated purely and effectively into the 3D model. And I wish them every amount of success that they can do on the next version or the next model that they're working on because I think it would be a little bit dangerous to continue along this path. It's not my responsibility to tell the team uh, that it's wrong or right. I'm just expressing my own feelings. Good on them for the bravery and not good on them for distancing themselves so far away from what is recognizable as a BMW to BMW lovers, traditional BMW lovers. Now, as for the design rating for this car, I'm gonna to have to be a little bit harsh on it. I will give it a four. And having thought about that rating and where I've placed the four series and the four series not being any better or any worse than this two series, I'm gonna to have to drop the four series also down to a four. And now I think I'm feeling about right with the rating on the charts now. As always, let me know what your ideas are, what your comments and your opinions are. Let me know if you think that BMW is botched it again or have they dug themselves out of a hole. I look forward to reading all your comments and I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Now, some of you may have noticed that I'm not wearing my Sunday best today. I am wearing something a little bit different. As you can see, this is the official Frank Stevenson merch, of which you can also have one if you go to the link below. They're available for a limited amount of time only, so make sure you get your orders in ASAP and you too can own a piece of automotive history.